Why did I buy this 20 year old FT60R radio? I had to have it. Let me tell you why on the podcast. Hey, what's going on everybody? This is the Yesu FT60R radio. It's came out in 2004 and now being in 2024, 20 years old. I just bought one. Why did I buy this radio? Let's discuss that and do a quick review at the exact same time. We are going to run through this review in three parts. The first part is going to be a generic review of the radio. Basically what the radio can do, what it looks like on the outside, and what makes this radio something that you can still buy 20 years after they started selling it. The second part of this review is going to be geared towards the amateur radio side of the house, such as how this radio is going to work if you are a ham radio operator. The third part though, which is why most of you are here, is how this radio works as a scanner radio. Some of its limitations, where it shines, where it doesn't. And then finally, we're gonna sum this all up with a review at the end. Of course, if you wanna jump ahead to anything, there's chapters down below. Let's go ahead and swap views and take a look at what this radio looks like. So looking at it right off the bat, it looks like your standard HT. We have a six character alphanumeric display, a front facing speaker, multi-function DTMF keypad, and these buttons change function based on whether they're short presses, long presses, or if you use a function key to even get into a third set of functions on these. On the side of the radio, we have our charging port and also our speaker mic port, which also doubles as our programming interface port. On the other side of the radio, we have up top our PTT button. Below that is a monitor button, which again opens the squelch for us. And then below that, we have our lamp. On top of the radio, we have our SMA antenna, we have a volume knob, and we have a dial which allows us to change channels, frequencies, and navigate through the menu system. And below that, we have a squelch ring. On the back of the radio, we have our belt clip, and we have our battery, which also includes contacts for the included drop-in charger. And the only thing on the bottom of the radio is a clip that holds the battery into place. Now this radio is definitely crazy when it comes to the amount of memories it has and, and how they work. So you have 1,000 standard memories, five home channels, which are basically quick access channels for each band. You have 50 sets of programmable memory services or PMS is what they call it in the manual. And what that basically means is it's a lower and upper range that the radio will search through. And you have 10 weather channels built into the radio. This radio also has 10 memory banks and you can break up the 1000 memory channels that you program in into as many memory banks as you want. So if you wanna have five memory channels in all 10 banks, you can do that. And then if you could put, I don't know, another 10 memories into one bank and 25 memories in another bank and 100 memories in another bank, you can easily do that with this radio. And what's also nice too is you can also label each memory bank. So if you want to say have two meter ham, aviation, federal, you can label those so that you know what is inside of each bank. What I like about this too is there are several different lamp modes in this radio, which means that the lamp will turn on if it stops on a busy channel, the lamp will turn on with a key press, or the lamp will just toggle off and on as you press the lamp key. And what really sets this radio apart from a typical scanner radio is the way that the keypad lock works. There's actually seven different types of locks on this radio. You can lock just the front keypad. You can lock just the dial. You can lock the keypad and the dial. You can lock the PTT. You can lock the PTT and the keypad. You can lock the PTT and the dial, or you can lock everything, the PTT, the keypad, and the dial. By today's standards, this doesn't really look all that sexy. But at a first glance, and just looking over the typical features of this radio, I can see why people are still buying these. And of course, we are just getting started in this review. This radio has a wide receive range on it, which is one of the reasons why I am reviewing it on this channel. This radio receives from 108 megahertz all the way up to 520 megahertz. It also receives from 700 to 999.99. Out of the box, this radio will transmit from 144 to 148 megahertz on the two meter side and 430 to 450 on the UHF side. Of course, if you opt to go for the Mars Cat mod, you can extend this transmitter range. There are three power levels to help you reach those repeaters. 
High power is 5 watts, medium power is 2 watts, and low power is half a watt. In order to make programming of this radio easier, there's an automatic repeater shift function, which means that the radio will go down or up for the proper split that you are trying to program in based on what frequency the repeater output is. And of course, if you have an odd split repeater, you can program those in very easily as well. This radio does support CTCSS and DCS encoding and decoding. And you can also split those as well because some repeaters will have a different output tone or code than the input tone or code. So not only can you have a split on the CTCSS input and output or the DCS input and output, but you can also change the split to CTCSS and DCS, DCS and CTS. So any way that your uh, local repeater operates, this radio is capable of programming it in. This radio also has what is supposed to be used for emergency search and rescues. They call it the emergency automated ID feature. And of course, we put a little bit of information about this on the screen. I've never used this. I've never really had a reason to. And again, this feature might be why this radio is in the hands of many operators who do support operations during disaster recovery. There's also an emergency automatic ID feature built into this radio and also what Yesu calls its arts feature or the automatic range transponder system. Once you walk outside that range, this radio will alert you so that you know that basically you're cut off. Again, if you're finding this review helpful and you're interested in buying one of these radios, we do have a link or two in the description of this podcast so that you can go ahead and make a purchase. And again, if you use those links, you'll be helping Scanner School out by using those affiliate links. I also want to thank our Patreon supporters. Our Patreon supporters have made it possible for us to take this audio-only podcast and bring it over to YouTube, which again, we are loving this YouTube platform and bringing these podcasts over to video. So by being a Patreon supporter, you get the podcast early and you also get several other benefits depending on what tier you are on. And again, I really do appreciate the help and support of all of our Patreon supporters. And if you'd like to help support this podcast, please visit scannerschool.com slash Patreon. Now, if you are here for the scanner radio side of things, this one is going to be a little bit of a doozy. Now, again, we have to remember, this radio here is a ham radio. It's an amateur radio, which means it wasn't really built for the scanner radio market. But again, we know that I like using radios that aren't really built for scanners as scanners because sometimes you get benefits that you couldn't normally get out of a commercial scanner, such as the fact that this is built like a brick house. The specs are higher on this radio than a consumer scanner radio. I would drop this off my belt and not worry too much about whether or not it's going to work when I pick it up. If I dropped a SDS 100, or a 436, look, the plastic on this is just, you feel it. it. It just feels more solid in your hand than one of those radios. But we're talking about conventional only, the small number of bands versus trunking and P25 and whatnot, right? So we are taking a trade off here. And again, one of the biggest trade offs that we are taking is right on the screen. This only has a six character alpha numeric display, which makes programming an alpha tag on this a little bit of a challenge. We have to be creative about what it is we are going to put into the alpha tag for these. And again, that's not necessarily something we have to do. We can program these without alpha tags if we know basically what the frequency is that we are looking at and who it is assigned to. Now there's three ways to scan on this radio. A typical busy scan, which basically means that as there's activity on a frequency, the scanner will stop scanning, wait for that carrier to drop, and then resume scanning. The second type of scanning on this radio is a hold type, which basically means that if the scanner stops on an active frequency, that's it, it is done scanning. You physically have to tell the scanner to resume scanning when you want to scan. Why is this a good feature? Because maybe you want to hear activity on a frequency, and then once that happens, you don't want to scan anymore, this is when you want to have that hold scan active. And finally, we have a time-based scan, which means that the scanner is going to sit on an active frequency for five seconds, and regardless of what's happening, we're gonna scan again. That's it, you got five seconds, boom, we're moving on. We have 10 memory banks in this radio with a thousand memory channels possible per memory bank. 
you can daisy chain each bank together if you want to. So you can scan maybe bank one, five, and six together. Maybe you want to do one, two, and three. Or if you want to do just bank one, you can do that as well. However, when you have a typical scanner radio, you can toggle these banks off and on by having the radio in scan mode and pushing one, two, three, four, five. You can't really do that with this. You have to enter into the menu system and turn those banks off and on. It is really a pain to do that. And again, this necessarily isn't a scanner radio, but again, there is an option to scan more than one bank. It's just something you're gonna wanna set up and forget basically because it's just, it's not easy to do. And well, neither is setting up a skip or a lockout on a frequency. You actually have to go through a multi-step process to lock and unlock a channel from the scan list. And, and this is the process right here, just so you can understand just really how difficult it's going to be. First, you have to press function. Then you have to navigate to memory 46. Then you gotta press function again. Then you have to toggle the skip off and on with the top of the dial. And then you press PTT to save that. And if that was five different things that you have to do just to lock and unlock a memory channel from the scan list. Again, on a typical scanner radio, lock, unlock. It's a button. You press it once to lock. You press it again to unlock it. Again, this is a ham radio, not a scanner radio. So it's a little bit different on how you operate. But again, these are things that are set up this way because you want to set this radio up once and take it out with you and use it differently than you normally would with a scanner. But what I do like about this radio that you normally don't get in the scanner is what they call dual watch. And what that means is you can park your radio on a frequency and then have it alternate back and forth between a priority channel and the current frequency that you are on. Try to do that with an everyday scanner. That is something you're not going to be able to do easily unless you pre-program that into a single bank or scan list. Now, what's nice about this radio too is what we have is called a preference scan. Now, what you do is you can predefined frequencies in the radio that you want to have a preference to. And you can actually scan these as a smaller scan list. So think about this as being a hot list, right? Maybe you have five or six frequencies, maybe you've got 10 frequencies that you really want to keep an ear on without having to toggle banks off and on or set them up in a separate bank or have to untoggle and retoggle banks just to get to them. No, you can enable just the priority or the preferred scanning frequencies, and this will give you a hot list of frequencies that you can scan on the fly. Again, you gotta go into a little bit of memories to get this set up. This one pays dividends if you set it up properly because not only do you have the option now of scanning banks, but you have the option of now scanning a hot list or a preferred list inside of the scanner with very little effort. And say you're traveling somewhere new, or you find yourself in an area that you didn't already have a scan list for, this radio will actually search through frequencies and program up to 31 memory channels for any frequency that it finds current activity on. And there's two ways that this radio will do it. It'll either do it from the current frequency you're on and scan up the dial to where you have your upper limit set, then go to the lower limit and come back to where you are in one pass. And during that pass, anything that's active, it will program into one of those 31 memory channels or it'll keep running in a consistent loop until it loads all 31 memory channels. Now, if you find yourself on one of these memory channels and you want to find what PL or DPL is being used, yes, you can do that from this radio as well, but it is painfully slow. It's not like today's modern radios that will give you an immediate readout of what the PL or DPL code is. No, this radio, because it's 20 years old, needs to do 20 year old technology which means it samples each PL code or each DPL code until it finds a match. Yeah, that could take some time, but if you have the need, it's in the radio. So in summary, what do we think about this radio? Look, I bought this because I was worried that, you know what, I'd want this radio after they stopped selling it. And that has happened to me numerous times. The price is right on it. It didn't break the bank. But again, is this something that I absolutely needed? No, it was something that I wanted to buy because again, I just, I've got the addiction. I've got to collect them all. I need to buy as many reels as I can. It's just a hobby that I enjoy. The FT60R came out, like I said, 20 years ago. And when I was really heavy into amateur radio, this radio here was all the rage. Everybody seemed to have one. 
I was involved with a lot of emergency services at the time, such as Aries, Racy's, Skywarn, and I was also the net coordinator here for my county. And at that time, it seemed like everybody under the sun had one, except for me. And now I am part of that Yesu FT60 club. Why did I buy this radio? Primarily, it was due to FOMO, or the fear of missing out. This radio is out 20 years now, like I said. I thought, well, you know what? Now's the time to buy one because this is a classic. And again, I had to see for myself why everybody seems to love this radio. And I'm very happy with the audio quality that comes out of this radio. Now, again, if I were to play it right now, you would get the audio from the microphone and you wouldn't really get a true sense of how good this audio sounds. This is a feature-packed radio that has stood the test of time. There's a reason why after 20 years, Yesu is still selling this radio. This is a favorite radio from beginner to more seasoned or advanced amateur radio operators. It is very popular in the emergency services side of amateur radio, such as Aries and Racy's and Skyward. Pretty much everybody had one of these radios in their go bag. And again, they are still popular to this day. And I'm sure that if you are a member of any amateur radio club, you'll see a couple of these out there in the wild as well. This radio is rugged. It is built well. Like I said before, it is a brick house. This is a radio that I would definitely not hesitate to take out and about, have it get banged up, uh, put it on my belt, put it in a bag, strap it to the side of a backpack strap or something like that, and let it take some abuse. Again, I wouldn't necessarily bring out my $600 SDS-100, but this radio, yeah, let's go to town with it. Again, this is something that you can give to a buddy of yours who might have butterfingers or give to somebody, again, that you're just kind of worried about that they're not going to treat something with respect or, you know, give it back to the condition you got it, that you lent it to them in. This radio should come back pretty damn good. Now, this radio is fairly easy to program. It's not all that difficult, but it is not all that convenient to set up either. I'm lazy. If I have a radio that I can program up with software, you bet I'm going to program that up with software. That's not to say you can't spend the time and set this radio up with the keypad, with the dial, and enter all the menus to set it up. Look, I just don't have that much time. I don't have that much energy, and I just don't have enough really, you know, willpower to try to do it that way. I'm gonna go ahead and use software. And the software I recommend to set this radio up is called Chirp. It is free and you can download it for Windows, Mac, and Linux, but you will need a cable. And you can find an aftermarket cable for just a couple of bucks over on eBay. And this is what I use to program up this radio. And of course the programming cable for this radio can also be used on different types of Yaesu radios as well. Not all of them, but you'll have to read the description to find out which ones. Now, if you want the cable for this radio, I'll have a link in the description of this podcast episode. And of course, that is yet another affiliate link. And if you use that link, it's a great way to support the podcast. One final question is, why is this radio still available if other radios by Yesu are out on the market and they are much newer and a little bit cheaper than this one? We will take a look at the Yesu. FT4XR and the Yesu FT65R on upcoming podcast episodes. So make sure you're subscribed here so you know when those videos are released. And we'll even put this radio head to head with those radios as well. So again, make sure you check that one out. In fact, if those videos are ready, they'll be right here on the side of the screen. So you can click on them right now and play them. We'll catch you all next week, 73.